Hallelujah, we are online. <laughs> yes, we are. Yes, Shabbat Shalom, and thank you for your patience. Good Shabbos. Yes. Wow, thank you, Lord, for your grace. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we uh, come together today to study your word, Lord. Amen. And you've shown me that there is none righteous, no, not one. We've all made promises to God that we have not kept. Mm. Yeah. And the subject of this morning's class is amnesty. Really? He wants you to think about it. So that's what we're going to talk about this morning. Go. Cool. Father God, we ask you to be with us today as we study. We ask you to reveal your heart in this matter, matter of, of amnesty and of what we owe you. Yes. And we have committed to you with our mouths and not been faithful, Lord. Mm. So I'm asking you to open our hearts and minds today to your truth. I'm asking your spirit to work in the hearts of everyone who hears this program, that they would remember the words that they spoke and that they would make it right somehow. Yes. To the best of their ability to make it right. Yes. We ask you to be with us as we study and use my mouth the way you want to. I just open myself up to you, Lord. And all of our students, up to you, for righteous judgment. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Everybody say, Lord. Lord. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I ask you to feed me. I ask you to feed me. With spiritual food. With spiritual food. From your throne. From your throne. And I'm thirsty, Lord. And I'm thirsty, Lord. Give me living water from heaven. Give me living water from heaven. And the strength to do what is right. And the strength to do what is right. And I thank you for it in the name of Messiah Yeshua. And I thank you for it in the name of Messiah Yeshua. Amen. Amen. Well, I have a feeling this one is not going to be an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> All of us have done this. Every person alive has made promises to God that they have not kept. Yeah. And if you have a heartbeat, check it out right now. You can see if you got a heartbeat, then you're guilty. So we have to rectify our ways before God mm -hmm. and ask him for the strength and the mercy and the grace to overcome these problems that we've created for ourselves. Yes. In the name of Messiah Yeshua. Amen. And the congregation says, Amen. Amen, and you may be seated. I guess you could say I guess you could say that the reason this topic came up is because of an old western I I watched Gunsmoke Have any of you seen Gunsmoke Mar Matt Dillon the marshal US marshal and <clears throat> This this guy that was involved in a bank robbery, and they had taken something like thirty thousand dollars or something, which is a lot of money for sure in that day. And uh, anyway, they all got uh, caught, and they all had to do their time. But nobody knew her, where the money was except this one person. And the rest of them figured he knew where it was, but they couldn't get it out of him. And in the meantime, Marshall Dillon always had a heart for mercy and to try to help people if he could. And he always uh, found ways, creative ways, that were 
uh, used to help people who were in deep trouble and didn't know what to do to get out. And they had a basically innocent heart, but they had just made some mistakes. The wife of this guy had found his stash. And so she started taking some money out of the stash and she would uh, receive a letter from her aunt and she would, when nobody was looking, stuff money in that envelope. And she was spending that money that way because everybody thought she would be doing that, but they couldn't catch her. So the bank came up to Marshall Dillon and said, we know that this guy's involved and we want to make a deal with him. We need the money more than we need to throw him in jail. If he will return all the money that he took for the bank, then we will give him amnesty. That means they'll let him off the hook and won't charge him with anything. So I was thinking about that this morning, and the Lord said, what if I offered amnesty to everybody who has lied to me? You think it would make any difference? And I got to thinking about it, and I said, I don't think so, Lord. <laughs> People are too greedy <laughs> and forgetful. But God holds us responsible. He says in the Psalms that keep all your vows to God most high, give thanks and offer praise, and when the day of trouble comes, he'll hear and answer us. How many of you know that? You read that psalm? Well, that's God's deal of amnesty. <laughs> But in order to get it, you have to pay back all you can of what you've taken. If you promise to buy Rabbi Hall a house, then you better <laughs> find a way to do it. Well, this woman had spent almost $1,000 of that money, so they didn't have it to give it back to the bank. They have to give every penny back is the deal. So they started talking it over. Do we have any source of income that we can think of, any source of money at all that we could come up with to pay this money that they are offering us uh, amnesty on? And the husband said, we can sell the farm. And she said, do you think it would bring that much in? And he says, I don't know, but we can try. I don't know, but we can try. I don't know, but we can try. So they put the, bar, the farm <laughs> for sale, and it came out to almost exactly the amount of money they were short. And the closing scene of, the, of this segment was they had loaded all their things up into a wagon and they were heading out to start life all over again. Oh, excuse me. I didn't get much sleep last night. I was praying all long. <laughs> uh, so they were going out to start with a clean slate. God's given us one escape already through Yeshua. What if we go and blow it again after that? What are we going to do? You make things right again. Sell the farm? But Rabbi, I don't own a farm. 
then you better think through and ask God to show you the answers that he has for you. Because he is a merciful God. At the same time, he expects us to do what we can do. But most people say, that's okay, God's merciful God, I'll just ask him to forgive me. You don't know God very well. He holds the guilty responsible, according to the Torah. So if you're being responsible and doing the best you could do, then you can expect God to do something for you. Because he is merciful. There's an old uh, saying I used to know from the early uh, 50s, 60s, when it, just when computers were starting to come in. Before the TRS-80. <laughs> we used to call them the trash 80s from Radio Shack, you know. <laughs> And the statement is, to err is human. But the really foul thing is that it takes a computer. <laughs> That's because the computer tends to compound your errors. <laughs> and it does it fast. God knows there are things that are beyond our control. But most people don't even ask him for forgiveness. Don't be like most people. Our God is an awesome God, full of mercy and grace and forgiveness. But holding the thousands of them responsible for what they have done. In today's society, the Christians know a lot about God's mercy. But they don't know much about his forgiveness. Rav Shaul said, All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And somebody said, said Well, show me in the Bible where God holds us responsible. The Lord's, let's just talk about that. Here we are. A people that God has chosen to forgive. Chosen to obliterate all of our wrongs and our wrong thoughts and doings against him and against everybody else. And give, give us the Messiah. The Messiah. And we go tromping haphazardly without thinking over everybody and everything we come to. Well, this guy has to forgive me because he's a Christian. But did you ask? You see what I'm saying? And so, you get off the hook by not asking the one you have faulted, which is a brother in the Lord. And yet, Yeshua said, however you treat others, you're treating me. Is that right? He said, do unto others the way, the, the way you would have them to do unto you. Do we do that? You think Yeshua will be happy with that when he stands in front of us and we, he asks us, why should he let you into his kingdom? And you're sitting there going, because I believed in you and accepted you. He won't be happy. And then he's going to start pulling all these names of people you have wronged since you became a believer. A quote, believer. All the people you've wronged and hurt. What did you do about any of these things? 
Did you do anything you can do? Did you even apologize? Did you ask them to forgive you? There's a thing that we do during um, the last month of the calendar of for Judaism. We have a sounding of a shofar every morning. And it's a call to repentance, community-wide repentance. And if you've re wronged a fellow believer, then we are instructed that if we don't ask them to forgive us, how will God forgive us our sins and our debts? So there is an accountability factor that God is counting on us to keep up. Let's suppose God just decided to give freebies. All the time, every day of the week, freebie, 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 just come and get it. Well, that's the way a lot of people act, isn't it? What God would there be in the universe that would ever give you an absolutely clean, clear slate and not expect anything in return from you? Would he? Should he? But that's the way Christians act. God isn't going to hold us accountable for anything we've done. We accepted Jesus. They probably put a little twist on their voice while they say it. Jesus. God's telling me to tell you that today, today, is an am amnesty day. If you will give serious thought to the ones that you have offended and make a commitment to go do as much as you possibly can to correct it. Uh, so many scriptures flying through my head right now. And one place it says, if you've got your offering and you're bringing it before the Lord, and you remember there that you have offended your brother, then you go and fix that offense. You apologize to your brother and fix it. And then come back and offer your offering to God and he'll accept it. Look, this thing has gone so far wacko out of line that I don't think that there's more than a handful of people, maybe a half a dozen people in the whole world that's deserve amnesty right now. But he's willing to give it as a matter of his grace. If you will only repent, turn around, quit hurting your brothers and sisters. He says, I love you all. But to behave the way you behave towards each other and towards me is not acceptable. How many of you would think it would be a good deal to find a job where you don't have to do anything, you don't have any responsibilities, and they're paying you a paycheck every week and just what they agreed to pay you? And they didn't ask you to do anything for it. Would that be a good job or a bad job? Wouldn't it kind of pile up on you after a while? You say, gee, I've been paid all these checks and I haven't done anything for the owner. Wouldn't that be a burden you have to carry? So a job where there's no expectations of you is not a job.
every employee that I know of that goes to work for a company, the bottom line is, what's in it for me? There has to be some accountability somehow, both directions. No one would ever sign a contractual agreement to work for someone else where there isn't any expectations. <laughs> Not going to happen. How can you expect more of your God? You do owe him some things. You owe him to treat your fellow brothers and sisters in the Lord the same way you would like to be treated. That's the big one right there. Yeshua said, this is how you'll know you're a part of my family when you love one another. When you love one another. When you treat others like you would like to be treated. This week's Torah Parsha, well, no, it's, it was from last week's Torah Parsha, Numbers chapter 30, verse 3. If a man vows a vow unto the Lord, or swears an oath to bind a bond with his soul. He shall not break his word. According to all that proceeds out of his mouth, he shall do it. Is God serious about oaths, vows? Goes on to say in verse 4, If a woman vows a vow unto the Lord by, to bind herself, being a bond, a bond person in the house, in her father's house, in her youth, and her father hears her vow, and her bond, wherewith she has bound uh, her soul, and he holds his peace at her, he doesn't say, oh, no, I don't agree with that. Because she belongs to her father. If her father holds his peace in all the vows that she bound herself with, will stand. God will hold her accountable. But if her father disallows her in the day that he hears it, of any of her bowels with which she has bound herself, then the uh, Lord shall forgive her and her oath shall not stand. Because her father disallowed it. That's good news. As many as you have believed in the Messiah, you have been purchased with a price according to scriptures. And you are now under your master, Yahweh. And if you make a mistake, Yahweh will whisper, I disagree. And then you're not going to be held liable for the words that flew out of your mouth. I'm dealing specifically with vows that have been made between us and Yahweh.
I remember when I was a child and I heard about the tithing. I said, I'm going to give everything, all my tithes I'm going to give to God. And then I just forgot about it. Well, my father in heaven, no, I was an idiot kid and didn't have a brain to play with, let alone think of, think with. He knew he was going to have to forgive that one before it even came out of my mouth, so he disagreed with it from the throne. But one of these days, we have to grow up. One of these days, we have to become more mature. One of these days, we're going to have to start taking into account every word that comes out of our mouth. When will that start? It started as soon as we came of the age of responsibility. That's when it started. What age is that? Roughly late teens. Age of accountability. So I wanted to th speak on these things is because we really rushed through that part in the Torah last week and because when I prayed and asked God what he wanted me to teach on this morning, bada beam, bada boom, this is what came up. You've got to be careful of the words you're speaking in a vow to God. This is one area he will not relent on. If you vow to vow to God to start paying your tithes to God, be faithful in it. Because God will not ha count your words as stable or worth listening to if you relent on your vows to Him. I hope you all are listening today. I prayed this morning God would touch some people's hearts over their financial responsibilities to God and his kingdom. I know of many people who have made vows to pay to uh, God through Zion. I haven't done anything to try to enforce that. But God's not that same way. He is not just going to forgive you without any reason for it. He's going to expect us to do what we are going to do, what we've committed to him to do. We've got to, at the very least, make every attempt humanly possible to keep our promises to him. And if things have gone horribly wrong for you and you don't really know why, perhaps there's the area that caused the problem for you. One time, God told me that there were probably around a thousand people that he had put on their heart to come to Zion. And they heard his voice and accepted the call, and he, they came. And then they came up and told me that, that God told me about Zion, and he wanted me, them to come here, and they finally showed up. And this is like years after he started putting it on their heart. And he said, then they said, I'm going to do what God is, has instructed me to do. I'm coming to Zion. And out of all the people that I've known who have made that comment out of their mouth, and that is a vow, I had one of them here. Not one. Isn't that interesting? 
And I'm talking about the ones who made that comment to me. I'm coming to Zion. God showed me to come here years ago, and I didn't do it. And now I'm here. I'm going to keep coming and support you and your ministry. Where'd they go? Hmm. Sounds to me like they don't believe in the God they believe in. <laughs> oh, God's forgiving. He'll forgive me. You better think twice about that statement. Too many things in the Bible seem to say the opposite of that. I've heard a comment said, well, contracts can change, can be broken. By whom? Well, they are. They're in error by saying such a thing. It's yes, very they arrogant. Are. They don't, their word is not, they don't even, they don't even hold on to their own words. You watch in this program right now. How many times has God told you to do something and you agreed to do it and then you didn't do it? How many times has God told you to quit doing something and you agreed with him not to do it anymore and you still do it? There was a guy that told me, God told me to quit smoking. So do it. Well, I've tried. That's the problem. You just either do or you don't. He said, but I've tried so many times. I really tried hard and I couldn't quit. You can quit or God wouldn't have told you to. You don't believe God. That's the problem. Who do you really belong to? Do you belong to the chief of the liars? <laughs> or to the chief of the truth keepers? Who do you act like? The chief of the liars? Or the chief of the truth keepers? You watching this program... You are on the edge of serious trouble. And you're not going to know what or why unless you listen to my counsel this morning. If your word was your bond, especially when talking to God, then you will do what you have vowed. Did you vow to support Zion and haven't? You better get on with it. You better try to make up what you can of, of the past because God's offering you a day right now of amnesty. But once you start getting behind on tithe, then boy, that's a serious issue. And it builds up fast. And every time you don't do what you were told to do, you get another strike against you. I'm not saying this just so you'll start giving me money. I'm not asking for that. But I am saying that if you promised God you were going to support Zion, then you better get off your backside and do it. Nine hundred ninety-nine out of a thousand and one people <laughs> don't do what they've promised God they would do. God is tired of all this nonsense. When we founded this country, the Puritans were the ones who really initiated it. They were looking for a land where there was freedom to obey God's laws and his words. 
and look where we've come to. This nation is in trouble because nobody keeps their vows to God. From the greatest to the least. I can't speak for every person, but I can tell you that I know that I know that the majority of people have not kept their word to Yahweh. If you think it's too late for you because you can't make it up now, it's just too hard, then pray for God's mercy and ask him to show you what to do and then do what he shows you to do. That's how you break the curse. Even the Father, if he holds his peace instead of speaking out when he disagrees with a vow, he's going to pay the price. In the day he hears of it, he has to deny it and reject it or it becomes a fixed thing in God's sight. All of us have to do this. All of us. To do anything less takes us out of his family. We've got to be careful with his family and, and where we fit. We have to be like he is. When we ask God to forgive us, does he? He keeps his word. Aren't you glad? Then be like him. That's how you prove that you're a part of the family is when you become righteous like he is righteous. When you treat others the way you, they would want you to be treated. When you treat others the way you want to be treated. That's what I meant to say. You want to be forgiven and shown mercy? then do that to others. Those are the kinds of things that are exhibited of children who belong to Almighty Yahweh. The good news is, he's offering amnesty, but you're going to have to do what you can do to restore everything you've upset and turned around and made wrong. Yes, God forgives and is merciful, but he's also expecting us to act righteously. It's your choice. Now, I've warned you, this is the voice of Yahweh speaking through this camera today, and you better listen. You better pay attention. You know how many times God has got your attention and tried to get you to do something, and you decided not to. Well, it was only God. It's only God. What's your religion? Where do you get it from? Not from the Bible. Because God is the king above all kings and the Lord above all lords. And you better listen to what he's got to say. We'll move on into our morning service at this time. 